Hey guys, let's knock out this uh, review real quick. It says number one, number one has two parts. List all the possible rational zeros by the given by the rational zeros theorem. Remember how you do that? You take the factors of the last number and put them over all the factors of the first number. So luckily the first number is one, so I'm gonna put one over one and three over one because those are the factors of three. When I get to the second part, the factors of eight are one, two, and four. The factors of 12 are one, two, three. There's a bunch of them. I forgot the four, four, six, 12. So I'm gonna put all of these over all of those. I'm gonna go plus or minus one over one, two over one, four over one, one over two. I'm not gonna put two over two or four over two because they're already there. Uh, one over three, two over three, four over three, uh, one over four. I'm not gonna put two over four, it's there. Four over four is there. One over six, I don't have to put two over six because one third is already there. And then one over 12, two over 12 is there. It's one sixth. 4 over 12 is there, it's 1 third, that's it. That's the whole list. So number one, just and two, just make a list. Number two says find all the zeros. We're gonna start this the same way. Let's make our list. The factors of 12 are one, two, three, four, six, 12. The first number is one, so just all over one. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna punch it in my calculator and see which one of those may work. What I've done is I've, I went to y equals and um, punched in that equation and, and graphed it to see where it, you know, x-axis, x-intercepts are solutions. So it looks like it crosses the x-axis at negative three, which is in my list, by the way. So I'm gonna try negative three here with my synthetic. And remember, if it is a zero, I will get zero when I do this. So I'm gonna bring that down, multiply, add, multiply, add, and sure enough, I get zero. So what I'm gonna do with this right here is, I'm gonna take it over here to the side and just solve what I have. I'm gonna to try to factor that, and I can. It'll be x minus two, x minus two, or x minus two squared. So my zeros are uh, negative three, and two is counts as a double zero. Sometimes we put dz or dr after for double root, but as long as you have negative three and two, you're good. Also notice the graph bounced right there. Mm -hmm. It bounced because it has uh, what we call multiplicity two, or an even exponent, it's squared. All right. Uh, the second part, number two, make a list again. So I'm going plus or minus one over one and two over one, one over two and two over two. And again, I'm going to punch this in my calculator. And again, I punched it in um, y equals and just graphed it. It looks like it crosses at one. So I'm going to try one here, two, negative one. Don't forget your zero. It's missing that x squared term. Bring down the two. One times two is two. Add, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply. Sure enough, it works. Um, this is with four terms. It also looks like it crosses at negative one. So I'm going to try negative one here uh, with my with the answer that I got last time, the two one one two. Uh, bring the two down, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add, and that gives me this two x squared minus x plus two. And if I I'm just going to be honest, I, I try to do slide divide slide here. It will not factor if you slide that two. Let's see, you're going to get a four here. And there's no factors of four that give you a negative one. Now, to be honest, there are still two more zeros, but they're imaginary, and this direction said just find the rational zeros. So the rational zeros were just positive and negative one, and that's your answer there. Number three, probably the longest one in the whole test. Um, find the problem number three, three with x with zeros negative four, four, and negative one. Reading great today. So I'm gonna say p of x is x plus four, that's where the negative four came from. x minus four, that's where the positive four came from. And x plus one, that's where the negative one came from. And your job, multiply all that out. And this isn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be. Those are conjugates. Remember, conjugates do foo. So x squared minus 16, x plus one. Then I'm just gonna do four, except I'm kinda gonna do it out of order. There's the first. This is, actually it's good. This is outer, inner, last. And there it is, there's your polynomial value. And if you solve that, you will get those zeros. Four and five, both types of division we did this week. One's synthetic, one's long division. On the synthetic one, I'm gonna put a negative three in the box because that's what makes that zero. Go on, don't forget your zero up there where the x squared would go. Bring down the one, one times negative three, add, multiply, add, multiply, boom. So my solution is gonna be it. Because I started with x cubed, my solution is gonna start, my quotient is gonna start with x squared, minus three x plus one. That negative one is the remainder. I always put the remainder over the fraction of the denominator that you started with. Number five, long division, everybody's favorite. I picked one that's a doozy too, because it's x squared. Oh my gosh, why did I pick this? Two x squared minus six x minus eight. That's gonna go into 
2 x to the fifth, minus 7 x to the fourth, and then all the way down there to minus 13. I'm skipping some space for the minus 13 because I'm missing the x cubed, the x squared, and the x. Other than that, not much. So I gotta ask myself, what do you multiply 2 x squared by to get 2 x to the fifth? And the answer is just x cubed. So I'm gonna multiply x cubed times everything in the front. And I'll get 2 x to the fifth, minus 6 x to the fourth, and then minus 8x cubed. Remember what we said this week, draw the line, change the sign. So that cancels, I get a negative 1x to the fourth, an 8x cubed, and then negative 13 still sitting out here. So what I'm gonna apply 2x squared to get negative x to the fourth? Um, oh my gosh, it's gonna be 1 half x squared. So I'm gonna put everything out there by 1 half x squared, which would give me, should, sorry, it should be a negative 1 half x squared because that was a negative x to the fourth. So, I'm going to get um, negative x to the fourth plus 3x cubed plus 4x squared. Draw the line, change the signs. Boom. That's gone. I got 5x cubed minus 4x squared. Still bringing down that 13. Hadn't come into play yet, but I keep on bringing it down there. So I got to ask myself, what am I about to about to get 5x cubed? This is a terrible problem. Um, the answer to that would be 5 halves x. So everything out there times 5 halves x. That's going to be 5x cubed. That's why I did that. 5 halves times 6. 2 goes into 6 3 times. 3 times 5 is 15. So I'm going to get negative 15x squared. 2 goes into 4 4 times. 4 times 5 is 20. So I get negative 20x. Draw the line. Change the signs. There's that. 11x squared plus 20x minus 13. Now the 13 is going to come into play. What do you multiply 2x by to get 11? 11 halves. And then you need no x this time because they're both x squared. So 11 halves times 2 gives you 11x. Just 11x squared. 2 goes into 6 3 times. 3 times 11 is 33. That's going to be negative 33x. 2 goes into 8 4 times. 4 times 11 is 44. I get negative 44. Draw the line. Change those signs. That's gone. Wow. I get 53x plus 31. What a problem. So my solution after all of that, I'm going to change colors here, is going to be x cubed minus 1 half x squared plus 5 halves x plus 11 halves um, plus 53x plus 31 over 2x squared minus 6x minus 8. That is a doozy. Oh my gosh. I don't know, believe I put one quite that tough on your test. If I did... <laughs> Just go for it. It's not that bad. It just takes a while. That was weird because of all the fractions in my quotient, though. So hopefully it made some sense. Number six. This is review now. Find the max and min. Uh, this means it's a parabola. So that means this is the vertex. So I'm going to do negative b over 2a, which is going to be negative 6 over 2 times 2, which is negative 6 fourths, which are negative 3 halves. Now that's the x coordinate. To find the max or min, I need the y. And because that's positive, by the way, the parabola is going up, which means it has a min. So I'm not looking for a min. And before I even do that, I know what the domain domain is every time. It's all reals because it's how far left and right it's going. I can't do the range without the y, which is what I got to find. So I'm going to take that negative 3 halves. I'm going to plug it in for all the x's. And punch it in my calculator real quick. I'm going to punch that in. I get negative 23 halves. And guys, that is what the minimum is. And it's also because it's the minimum, my range is going to be, it's going to go from negative 23 halves to infinity. It's going to go up forever from there. Number seven, sketch the graph, which means a couple things right off the bat. It's even and it's positive, so I know both ends are going up. Um, that's factor, so I can find the zeros and figure out where it crosses the x-axis. I'm going to factor out an x squared. That would leave me an x squared minus 3x plus 2. Factor what I still have, x squared, now it's going to be x minus 2, x minus 1. Now, my zeros are going to be 0, 2, and 1. That's what's going to cross. It's just going to cross at 0. That's too big. 0, 2, and 1. Real close together. Now, notice the 0 has a square. It's going to bounce there. It's just going up on the end. It's going to come down, bounce, go back up, go through, go through. It's going to look something like that. That's all there is to it. Number 8. Been a while here. Find all the solutions of cosine theta plus 1. Just move the cos move the negative one over. So it's asking you where is cosine negative one? Uh, where remember cosine is x. Cosine is x, sine is y. Where is x negative one on the unit circle? At pi. All you gotta do. Number nine, describe the end behavior. 
first thing I notice is it's even and negative, which means it's going down both ways. So I'm gonna say, okay, as X goes left, the graph goes down. As X goes right, the graph goes down. And there's that one. And number 10, the last one, explain how the graph of G, this graph, um, this graph can be attained from that one. That's just once you list all the transformations that happen here. So first thing, the negative in the front is gonna reflect, reflects across the X axis. The one half is a vertical shrink. I was supposed to say shrink by one half. That's not a very good one. I'm having a hard time here. Um, the minus the x minus three is a um, shift. Remember, opposite of what you think inside. Shift right three, and the plus two on the outside is a shift up. Outside is exactly what you think up two, and there you go. There's all the shifts. So hopefully not too bad. Use this video. Make 100 again. You're off to a great start. Stay off to a good start. I'll see you tomorrow.